They say you're not supposed to pick your favorite reptile or your favorite pet, but I did. Mine is Diamond the Bearded Dragon. And today I'm gonna teach you how to set up the perfect Bearded Dragon enclosure on a budget. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. So you see Diamond basically every episode, but you never really see where he lives. So today let's do a little revamp of his enclosure and let's start with the actual enclosure itself. I got from Cages, thank you guys so much, they sent me a four foot by two foot by two foot tall enclosure. In my opinion, this is the perfect size. It's 120 gallons, I don't know why we measure things in gallons, but that's how big it is. It's the one that's specifically designed for bearded dragons and we've got a halogen light on an Arcadia fixture. So, all in all, this is really simple for a bare bones type thing. It's glass, which is great, so it's not going to scratch up like some acrylic brands would. So now we have the shell, let's go ahead and get started and start putting things in. And I wanna make this super simple, I'm not gonna dilly-dally, let's get right to it, starting with substrate. For substrate, I've got a couple of things. I usually mix a play sand, well this isn't play sand, this is coconut core, but a coconut core and play sand mixture. Now if you get washed play sand, it does not matter where you get it. Organic washed play sand, that's it. I get mine from Canadian Tire or Home Hardware. And for the coconut core, comes in a brick, you hydrate it, and then you wait for it to dry out, that's how it works, and I get mine from Home Hardware too. That's it. The question I got asked more than anything the last time I did one of these videos is what's the mixture? I go about 50-50, don't overthink things. This is a substrate in nature. If you find substrate from here or 500 meters away, it's gonna be completely different. And in nature, there is no slate, there is no tile, there is no paper towel, and there definitely is no reptile carpet. So don't be afraid to use a substrate like this. Although if you wanted, you could always use a slate or tile. I do not recommend reptile carpet. It can get their nails and kind of pull them out. I've had that happen with leopard gecko and their breeding ground for bacteria. So I would stay away from that. But otherwise, this I would estimate costs me five dollars maybe and i change it every six months i spot clean it that's it so ten dollars a year for substrate how can you go wrong with that now you'll notice i left a little spot that doesn't have anything except for the bare floor it doesn't have any sand and the reason i'm going to do that i'm gonna kind of go against my own advice here because normally I would say that you don't need a water dish, but Universal Rocks Canada sent me one. So I'm gonna use it and it's just shallow enough that it will give him a chance to drink some water if he chooses to, but it's not going to raise the humidity. And I always put the water dish on the cool side. Next, and we talked about this before where there's an issue with bearded dragons having femoral pores that are going to get clogged up. And the reason that this happens is that they have too few rough things and too many smooth things to climb on and climb around. Now PVC is smooth, it's not gonna do the trick. So instead, we're gonna put a nice brick in there. Now this is a brick I found at one of my old properties literally 10 years ago maybe. Actually, I think it was still living at home. So we're talking 12 or 13 years ago when I got my first bearded dragon. I've always used it, cleaned it up, and this is gonna be rough enough where it's gonna be good for not only his femoral pores to rub against, but also his nails to keep those less sharp as well, kind of filed down. Next, we're gonna give him a basking spot. Now, the reason you want a basking area that's elevated is because that halogen light is only a 50 watt, which is all I need. In order to get it to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit on the hot spot, I need to put it right around about a foot off of the ground. It's two feet, so it's about a foot or maybe less than a foot, so it's about 10 inches away from there. And that's, you're gonna have to play around with this yourself. It depends on the ambient temperature in the room, how tall it is, uh, what wattage light you use. But for me, I've experimented, and I know that this specific branch that has just a piece of fake plant tied to it, because it looks nice, is the perfect basking spot for diamond. And you're gonna see with this that there are sections where it's a little bit lower or higher, so he can choose exactly how close he is and the temperature. So if it's 115 up here and it's 110 down here, he can choose to be at one or the other. But just make sure that your basking spot is available at the right temperature. And if you wanna know how, there's a care guide right here. Tells you exactly what you need to know. Next, we need places for diamond to hide. Now, you can go out and just get something from 
a reptile shop. That's fine totally. Or what I like to do is cork rounds because in nature, these animals, bearded dragons, are gonna be found on kind of logs or fence posts or things like that. So it kind of emulates where they're going to be from. Although it might not be cork, it is a tree bark. So it's close enough. Not only that, but it looks more aesthetic in my opinion. It doesn't look like plastic. Although it's in a big white plastic box, I totally understand that. But I like to use cork rounds. Cork rounds are not the cheapest things in the world, but if you get them, they will last forever. And I like ones that you can see all the way through. This one's really big. I'm putting sand all over the floor. But either way, I'm gonna throw this one in there because it's good enough where it's a hide and you can go up top there too. I'm gonna put this on the warm side. We've got one more cork tube. Now this one also is big enough that he can get all the way through if he wants, which is important. Don't put a cork tube in there that's gonna be so tiny and so cramped that he's not gonna be able to get in. Because if he can get in just a little bit, he can get stuck and then you're forced to try to get one of these things kind of cut open without hurting your dragon and best of luck doing that. So make sure that it's an appropriate size. He can definitely get all the way through this if he chooses or he can just use it to get up. And we're gonna place this as nicely as we can so it looks nice but is also functional for the dragon too. I guess I'll address this now. Uh, am I going to plant this thing? No, and the reason is bearded dragons are known for digging. They can dig. Now Diamond himself doesn't usually dig too much but I have tried to plant one of these and he just kind of destroys it. So the plants kind of go everywhere. There is a way to do it. I think Serpent Design did a video where you have to make these mesh boxes. And anyway, I'm trying to make this for everybody. It's super easy, super cheap, super simple. So what I do instead is just add fake foliage. It just makes it look nicer. It gives them an extra place to hide. This is unnecessary. The way it is right now would be totally fine for diamonds. Now I buy these at the dollar store or in Canada, the um, everything is $4 now for some reason. Like this is $3, this little tiny thing. So American, that's like what, 17 cents? Uh, I'm in Canada, by the way, if you didn't know. Either way, I'm gonna use just three of these. So it costs a total of $9. In the US, for sure, these are a dollar each, maybe a dollar fifty. So it'll cost you four fifty at most. Make sure also you get the uh, adhesive off because you don't want the adhesive, although very uncommon, to stick to his scales. So you just rip that off and make sure all of it comes off, not just a little bit. And the idea here is you can place them wherever you want. You can, this isn't as much for function as anything else. The things for function are the heat, the UVB, you need those things. You need an enclosure at least this big. You need places for him to climb. You need rough surfaces. You need a water bowl. All those things you need. The rest is just kind of up to you how you want to do it. Make it look beautiful, make it look elaborate. However you want to do it, you can add things from the ceiling for him to climb. I'm just trying to show you a kind of a bare bones, easy way that you can do it that's not intimidating, but it's up to you at the end of the day. And that is basically it. Now, obviously this was a shorter video and even from the time the editor will attest that I went running back and forth filming this, the entire 19 minutes it took me to do this. Literally 19 minutes and not even everything was set up. So this will take you literally like 10 minutes because you don't have to talk to a camera and reset and do B-roll and the whole thing. All in all, let's count it up. Just kind of like, instead of the analytical, let's just count it up, okay? So the actual enclosure depends which one you buy. Let's say you buy one for a hundred bucks on Craigslist, right? hundred bucks, your UVB is gonna be 50 bucks. This is really important to buy the kit. It's 50 bucks, let's call it. The halogens that I buy are literally $2. $5 if you wanna go to a reptile store, let's call it five bucks. And then the actual fixture, that was about 20 bucks. So let's say 25 bucks for the light. Let's call it 200 bucks for the box. Let's kind of go up there, although you can probably get it for 100. So you're in it for 275 bucks. The rest of it is easy peasy. Let's say five bucks for the substrate. Literally, that's what it cost me. Probably could cost you less. The cork tubes were about 20 bucks in total. And the foliage was about five bucks. The water dish, you can say use an old Tupperware, or you can buy one set for say five bucks that looks nice and then find a piece of rock in your backyard and that's free. So we're gonna put the total on the screen here cause math is hard and I forgot what I was saying. But either way, let's put diamond into his enclosure and let's see how he likes it. I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching, for hitting subscribe, hitting the like button. I really appreciate it. It really helps this channel. And as always a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get extra videos, you get videos early, discounts on the merch, all that and more for as little as a dollar a month. And that's it. Cause I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.